I was deemed a career criminal. They decided that there was no help for me, and all they could do was just lock me away. You start robbing people because the drugs have you, you know. You're really no longer human, you know, and that's how I felt. So I always got arrested going to the system, and I started doing them two years and three years, and all together it added up to around about 28 something years. There were murders, there were shootings. My stoop in particular was a crack emporium where uh, people sat and sold crack. People were using the telephone booths for protection to have sex. You know, there was condoms all over the streets. The disorderly groups, the drugs, the prostitution. Our partnership with the Midtown Community Court started in the early 90s when there were a whole bunch of quality of life problems that just weren't being solved by normal means. And so there was a need for creativity and innovation and partnership. Instead of being a passive bystander, the court system maybe could step forward and use some of the court interventions positively and constructively. So I was originally attracted to this line of work uh, by meeting a guy named John Feinblatt. And John's vision of criminal justice reform was really about combining punishment and help and saying that every criminal act deserves some sort of a response from the justice system, but that we also should link the individuals who came before the court as defendants to the kinds of services that would help them stop being recidivists. I think we are sending two messages. One is that crime has consequences. It ought to be punished. But at the same time, if we're serious about doing something about it, crime, we have to address some of the problems that we think are associated with it. I was involved with the criminal justice system for over 30 years. It started when I was 16 and it ended when I was 44. Actually, crime and, and drug addiction and alcoholism all contributed to the, the vicious cycle of my life. Drink, use drugs, commit crimes to get money, to drink and use drugs end up in jail, go to prison, come back out. I started off in 68 far as using drugs. And so when using drugs, I started committing crimes. Me going downtown, sticking my hands in cash registers, and then I came more involved in using drugs. So it caused me to go back and forth into the system. So we started off with a, an exclusive focus on just one Manhattan neighborhood. And from there, we've widened our lens with almost every passing year. Now we run projects across all five boroughs. Now we perform training across New York State. Now we work internationally as well as domestically. In the 90s, there was gunfire in the streets of Red Hook. Uh, and people felt completely disenfranchised from the court system. The Center for Court Innovation designed a system where I can deliver services to defendants, backed up by the power of the court. Part of what we do, obviously, is re reduce the number of people going into jail, but at the same time, we're requiring them to do service and to do what they need to do to get their lives back on track. And we don't just put them in the treatment, we monitor that treatment, we get them clean before we end the case. We've got a clinic on the second floor. We've got a GED classroom on the second floor. So people can do drug treatment, can get mental health assistance. Teenagers can do youth court here also, and they can get youth counseling, and parents can get counseling for their kids. Today, Harlem Entry Court has helped me a great deal. I mean, it gave me structure. If I go to treatment, stay drug free, and I work, I feel everything else will fall in place. The Times Square Inc. program inside the Midtown Community Court is geared to help ex-offenders acquire employment. Like, how does a person like me with two felony convictions, four misdemeanor convictions, and 30 years of substance abuse with no work experience get a job? How do you tell people that and they're going to hire you? Times Square Inc. sort of showed me how to do that, and it showed me that I was building on on, on, I was building a new site. I was building a new record. The SOS program is a perfect example of how we work. People were starting to come into our office and say, I've lost somebody to gun violence. How can you help? We hire credible messengers 
who are people who've been there, done that, been on both sides of the gun themselves, and can speak with authority and credibility to those people who might be involved in a gun incident. Well, somebody gets shot or somebody gets killed, they go out and uh, um, speak to the family, speak to the kids that's involved in it, try to put a, a cap on it where it's not going to blow itself out of proportion. It's a safe neighborhood. It's day and night. I think if the court had not moved into this area when they did, we would not be where we are today. Crime has gone down in each of our three precincts. In 2005 and 2006, the 76 precinct was the number one precinct in percentage of crime reduction, and those numbers have stayed low. Reddick has changed significantly. It's a great place to come to. It's a great place to live, and it's a great place to be working. Whether it's the Red Hook Community Justice Center transforming a local park so that mothers feel safe to bring their children there, whether it's the Brooklyn Treatment Court turning around the life of an addicted offender and getting them back on track and moving towards sobriety, whether it's the Domestic Violence Court working with victims of domestic violence and linking them to the type of shelter and services that lead them out of an abusive relationship and into safety. Those are the stories behind the numbers, and that, at the end of the day, is what the Center for Court Innovation is about. The success of the Midtown Community Court was about building trust, building trust with the community, with the police officers, with the judge, with the defendants, and with the social service providers. They all had to trust the court. They all had to trust each other. Innovation, accountability, those are the things that we're trying to do in city government. That's what the center's trying to do. They really are making a difference. Combining punishment with assistance has proven to be a critical strategy in protecting public resources and improving public safety. I'm proud of the progress that we're making and of the investments that we're directing to support our community courts and the Center for Court Innovation you know, the Center for Court Innovation has been uh, really a great partner, mentor, source of information for us. CCI, CCI. courage, compassion, and imagination. Uh, we could go all have fun just what does CCI stand for, uh, but for uh, us, the C's stand for change, uh, and uh, we're very happy uh, that we have this great partnership. How do I see the Center for Court Innovation's role going forward? I see it as a leader in New York and around the country in rethinking justice. It wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the Center for Court Innovation. All of these projects that the center oversees all impact and touch people's lives. I'm a voice for many, many, many people who have come through the doors of the Mid Midtown Community Court to A, let people know that hope is, is alive, B, that change is possible and see that there are no throwaway people because I was considered one of those people.